The Eagles benefited, in my opinion, greatly from the fact that the big question about player availability coming out of Sunday was Bijan Robinson with the Falcons. I think we're talking about that later in the program. I frankly can't yes, remember. Right. But there was an issue with Jalen Hurts, and I noticed it the first time he tried to run the ball during the game. Yeah. What's wrong with Jalen Hurts? He doesn't have his usual burst. He doesn't have his acceleration. We noticed it again later in the half. By the second half, he was wearing a knee brace. Now, no mention of Jalen Hurts having any type of an injury before the game. No announcement that he suffered an injury during the game. And yesterday, on the Eagles injury report for week eight, game against Washington, no mention of Hurts having a knee injury now. And and people say, well, if he practiced, well, we see all the time, full participant in practice, and then there's an injury. Knee, hip, elbow, whatever. Here is both Nick Sirianni, the head coach of the Eagles, and Jalen Hurts from yesterday talking about the Jalen Hurts knee injury that either is or isn't an injury. According to the Eagles, officially, it isn't. Have a listen. We're confident that, that he'll be ready to go, but it's, you know, anytime he's, he's anytime these guys are working through uh, pain and, and things like that, I mean, they got to, you know, we, we anticipate them to go, but like, uh, it's, it, that doesn't mean it's easy. Right. And so, um, you know, works, we're, we're, you know, again, we'll see as we're not going to be out in the field running around today. Um, so I still need a little bit more time to, but I think he's feeling better, but I'll let you, you guys ask him that. And so we're hopeful that, that he'll be no uh, limitations on, on Sunday. Um, you know, I think it's just, um, things happen a part of the game. Um, I've already said that <clears throat> it didn't happen in the game. So, um, you know, it's just something that we're dealing with day by day, They're taking it one day at a time. I would have thought Jalen Hurts had a better poker face. <laughs> Look, I went back and watched his post-game press conference after the Sunday night game. Now, we played Sirianni sound on Monday. The way Sirianni phrased it, it sounded like it was something that happened during the game. Never came out and said it, but conjugation, the way he delivered it, I got the impression that he was conceding it happened during the game. And you have to listen closely to Hurts' press conference after the game. He does say, he is asked, did it happen during the game? And he just says no. And then the next question comes. It's one of those where you can't really hear all that clearly what the person said, but the person said, did it happen during the game? He said it again yesterday. I've said it didn't, ha it didn't happen during the game. Okay, fine. So... What's going on here, Chris? You got a guy who's got a knee injury that isn't disclosed yeah. in any way, shape, or form, right. who's clearly not himself. Yeah. And this all gets back to, hey, I, I put $100 on the Jalen Hurts over on his rushing number of 45.5 yards or whatever the number was for the game. Well, if I'd have known he had a knee injury, I might have bet the under. I might not have betted it at all. Yeah, I hear you. This is something if the NFL is going to grab all the gambling money it can out of the air and cram it into its pockets, this is something the NFL has a clear obligation to police and enforce. And the teams aren't going to go along with it until the NFL starts clunking heads together and imposing punishment that removes the incentive, the strategic incentive to not disclose to the Dolphins in advance of a big game that the quarterback is is banged up. Yeah. If the Dolphins yeah. don't know, yeah. that's to the Eagles' advantage. Yeah, no. Or it's going to take some, like we talked about on, on Tuesday or whatever day it was, some bored rich guy who goes, wait, I bet $100,000 on that game and I got a lot more money and I didn't know that guy was hurt. I'm going to sue the NFL or the team or whatever. And I feel like that's the only thing that's going to wake this up. It's not right. It's not right to the gambling community. 100% agreed with you there. The NFL's too buttoned up to let stuff like this happen. So it's a little ridiculous. All right. Um, but my spidey senses tell me, okay, just from this is not even, la you know, I know we were watching the game together and when he ran out to the right and we were like, man, he not running the same. But I've had other last week versus the Jets. You know, producer Matt Casey, there was a game before that where we commented, like, he doesn't look the same with that extra little burst. And he has had a lot of moments this year where he's gotten on the edge and he just goes down as in almost protecting his knees, right? 
So, again, I don't know. This is total speculation. But a lifetime of me being obsessed with the game of football and watching it, and that's all I freaking do, that it kind of, to me, feels like, yeah, it didn't happen in the game. This is something he's been managing maybe here for a few weeks. And, you know, that is that is troubling. You know, yes, the betting public deserves to know. It should be reported the right way. But I also know, too, like, you know – I had a coach text me, like uh, I'm going to say maybe it was two or three weeks ago, that some of the ways teams are skirting these little rules and all this is a guy like Jalen Hurts. And I'm not saying I might have done the same thing. I'm not trying to. But so many guys now have their own people they go see. They go see their own yep. trainer, their yep. own rehab. They don't get rehab at the stadium. And if they've got a guy that they see that they know the team kind of trusts or whatever, you know, a coach like Nick Sirianni, the organization, they might go, hey, don't don't go in there. Go see your guy. Then we don't have to report it, and we trust your guy, and you're doing the right things, and we know that. And that's a way to kind of skirt the rules. And I think that could go on too. And I'm not saying that's going on here. I don't know either way. But it's just a little fishy, the whole the whole thing as it stands right now. I think you're on to something. It's the Tom Brady, Alex Guerrero exactly approach, where right. there's never a record of Tom Brady getting treatment for this, that, or the other thing. And remember, he played all of 2020 with a fully torn MCL in his knee that they never disclosed right. a single time. And I go back to Brett Favre, 2008 with the Jets, when they were in position to be the top seed in the – AFC after beating the Titans on the Thursday night game. Wasn't it the Titans they beat when you were with the Titans, right? 08. Yeah. And then it all fell apart. Yep. It all yes. fell apart for the Jets after that. We were 10 and, and then 0 the next when they year, came into town and beat us. They yeah. were the first team to beat us. And we were like, man, they're, and they made them 9 and 3. And we were like, wow, we're going to, I guess we're going to see them again in the playoffs, maybe. And then you're exactly right. They fell apart and I think lost like, you know, three out of their last four or something like that. And here's what happened. Yeah. When Favre joined the Vikings the next year and they started asking him about the way the Jets collapsed down the stretch, he had his excuse. I have a partially torn biceps tendon in my arm. And he kept talking about it and talking about it. And the NFL had to go back and find everybody. They find Eric Mangini. They find Mike Tannenbaum. They find the Jets for hiding it because they had the record of him getting treatment for the biceps tendon. So you're absolutely right. You never have a paper trail that the quarterback or any player has gotten treatment in the facility if he's going down to the TB12 shop or if he's just doing something at home or if he's Matthew Stafford and he keeps his mouth shut about it and just deals with it, as I think Matthew Stafford does with plenty of the injuries that he has that we never know about. So maybe that is a way that they're getting around it. But, you know, Chris, if, if your assessment's right, that this is something he's been managing for a while, I just went back through all their injury reports this year. He's never named once right. on I know. any of them. Yeah. Not a single time. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know, Mike. And and I think those are ways, you know, teams can, can skirt the rules a little bit. And I just want to make it sure I'm, I'm, not, I'm certainly not blaming – you know, the Eagles or Jalen Hurts. I'd probably do some of the same things if I was him. I, I, I don't, They're going to let you do it. Yeah, if you They're can get away it, with it, it. Exactly. Smoke them if you got them, right? I mean, that's that's the way it is there. So uh, I, I totally get that. But at the same time, I also get the gambling community and fairness and what the NFL needs to do, and they can't let that go on. That's not right. It's not right, like you have always said, for the NFL to go, hey, here, give us billions, you know, gambling companies, and then you do wrong by the customers who are trying to, you know, trying to fight an uphill battle and winning against the gambling companies as it is anyways, let alone now they're missing huge pieces of information that should be supplied by the NFL. That, that, that's not right. This is not an anti-Eagles take. Not this at is all. NFL. If you are going to grab every last dollar you can from FanDuel and DraftKings and BetMGM and this one and that one and that one and that one and that one, you better get your house in order. You better make sure that teams are providing fair information to the people out there who are legally wagering their hard-earned money, assuming there's transparency, accuracy, truth, and honesty in the information that they have. And there currently isn't because the NFL isn't demanding it from the teams. Again, we'll have more on that later with the latest on B. John Robinson and how the Falcons are dealing with the fact that the NFL is poking around. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.